Here is a Pioneer Stereo CD Receiver XCL7. I found this in the e-waste at the recycling center, and when I found it, this is what I saw, the top. And I guess you're all going to agree, this does look quite interesting. So I picked it up and I saw the back of the unit, and yeah, this is part of a compact component stereo system. We do have the typical proprietary connectors to go to the other components, but we also have a standard auxiliary input and some standard speaker outputs. So I thought this has got to be useful. Well, it was not until I arrived home that I saw the front of the unit and that was quite a disappointment because this is it. This is all there is. The CD loading tray and a couple of buttons. Where is the display? Where is the volume control? Well, it turns out that this was quite an interesting and quite a unique design where the display, along with some more buttons, was inside a separate unit that connected to this main unit, kind of like a monitor would connect to a computer. Interesting design, but of course, I don't have the unit with a display. I don't even know if it was uh, also lying in the e-waste or if this thing was the only part of the system there was. Now, I have looked up this system on eBay, and it turns out these systems complete with the display unit, with the original speakers, sell for as low as 20 euro. So this thing is worthless, it's useless, and that means it's teardown time. I want to know what's inside of this thing, I want to know when it was made, I want to know how it works, and most importantly, I want to know what useful components are inside of here that can be salvaged for future DIY projects. It turns out the system is held together by these really cheap screws, the ones that only take two turns to get out. The first thing that comes off is the black cover in the back. This is actually made from metal. And then, basically, the whole entire case pulls off towards the front, like so. The buttons on the front connect to the main unit via this ribbon cable that plugs in right there. And now, the case is made from plastic, but there is a metal panel inside to provide shielding to the circuit board on top. Now, this is covered by plastic to provide insulation against that metal panel. As you can see, there is still a CD in here, which apparently contains house music, so I will give that a listen. And the circuit board on the top seems to be all for the CD player, because there are various test points all over this board, like right here and right here, and those are all related to the CD player. It's quite interesting how the system has been put together. After taking out some more screws and a cable down there, this entire board comes out and folds over, along with this daughter board, like so. All of the other cables connect along here, so the system was designed with serviceability in mind. Well done, Pioneer. It turns out this top board is not exclusively for the CD player. This chip right here appears to be the main controller, the main processor for the system, because the proprietary connectors that connect to the display unit and the rest of the compact stereo system all connect straight into this chip. 
I have had a look at some of the date codes on the ICs on these boards, and they all say 90 and 91, so that indicates that the system was made in 1991, but this looks way too modern for that. So I did some research online, and it turns out the system was made in 1998. With these two boards folded out of the way, we can now see the interesting stuff in the bottom. This board is for the tuner, and then the boards grouped around this heatsink right there and there are for the amplifier and the power supply. Likewise, the main board in the bottom appears to be for the power supply. There are some filter capacitors right there. There is a fan that's pulling air through this heatsink. It has also pulled in a lot of dirt into the system. It's quite filthy. And this right here is one of my questions answered. The system does run off a traditional transformer with linear power supply. No switch mode power supply in this one. Some more disassembly has been done. I have rescued the house CDR, which unfortunately is quite scratched, so that might not play very well. I have noticed this laser assembly is quite loose. You can see how this is moving, including the track that it rides on. So I think it's safe to say the CD player was not working anymore and that was probably the reason why the system was thrown away. I have also taken out the tuner circuit board. Nothing special on here. It contains everything that you would expect. It connects to the top circuit board via this edge connector. There is no connection into the bottom of the unit. The CD player mechanism has been removed. This little board up in the corner really only contains the headphone jack. This is just a cheap plasticky three and a half millimeter connector. Nothing interesting. And now we can already tell pretty well what is what on this bottom assembly. So the mains comes in right there. There is the main fuse. We then have the transformer, obviously. Around here, something strange under this cover, we have this metal box, and this contains two rectifier bridges. For some reason, the rectifier bridges in this stereo system are shielded. This box does not act as a heatsink. It's just for shielding. Very strange. There are the filter capacitors, some of which we've already seen. And the regulated power supply is over here on this daughter board. There are four regulator transistors, one down here and then three up here on this heatsink. And each one of these transistors has its own daughter board. A daughter board mounted to a daughter board. Does that mean that these are granddaughter boards? Anyway, over here is the circuitry for the amplifier. The main component of the amplifier is right there. You can probably already tell. Unfortunately, it is just an STK type hybrid amplifier. Not as interesting as I had hoped. And down here on the main board, hiding right here, are some what I assume are speaker protection and standby relays. And here is everything removed from the case and taken apart a bit further. It turns out I made one mistake. I said this board contained the amplifier circuitry, but it doesn't. It's more of a input-output circuit board. If I pull it out, there are the main speaker outputs as well as this little output for a subwoofer. The circuit board only contains the filtering for the speaker outputs, and it's an interconnect to this board, which contains the SPDIF optical output for the CD player and the auxiliary input, and that all goes to the rest of the system via this uh, flat cable. 
not a good idea running speaker output signals and line level input signals in parallel to each other. With the circuit board out of the way, we can now take a better look at the STK chip. It's an STK401-030. And I've also taken off the regulated power supply circuit board and folded it down. It seems like they are quite serious about generating a symmetric regulated voltage because there is this little operational amplifier, which is most likely used in a balancing circuit. This little voltage regulator off to the side that didn't need a heatsink is actually a 78M5 type voltage regulator for 5 volts. And finally, after taking off this board, I have discovered one component in this system that is really interesting. I just said that there is a separate subwoofer output, and that is not coming from this STK chip. There were STK-type hybrid amplifiers with three outputs, but in the case of this system, the subwoofer output comes from this chip down here, an LM 3886TF. And I have actually been interested in this chip. I thought about ordering a few of them because this is a really good amplifier chip. Well, now I have one of them for evaluation, so that's really good. So I guess that means this teardown has been totally worth it. But it has also been worth it for a whole other reason, and that is, I think it's quite fascinating how this system was put together and how they have stuffed and squeezed everything into this small case. See, there is another connector up there, and uh, if I release that, or try to release it, let's see, yeah, it's a push-type connector. The transformer with the primary side circuit board comes off and that leaves us with this board with the power supply and main amplifier and with all the modules that once made up the system laid out like this you can really tell how much they managed to squeeze into a relatively small space thank you for watching